Lord, thank you, Lord, for Gustavo, for his family, for his journey, for, Lord, just his faithful relationship with you. And we pray, Lord, speak to us, Lord, tonight. Holy Spirit, take what you've given him and release it to us, Lord. Lord, inspire, convict, and move our hearts tonight, Lord. And so we bless you for him in Jesus' name. So my name is Gustavo Palacio. Um, <laughs> so I'm from Colombia, uh, the beautiful city. It's a uh, city of the valleys, they call it. Uh, so we've been here for one month and one week, I think, so far. So it's a great privilege that I get to do this after a month and a week to share with, the, with you guys the, the amazing gospel, the gospel of the kingdom. So before we do that, um, I want us to pray. You guys pray? <laughs> All right, so I want you, for a couple of minutes, let's gaze upon the Lord. Let's ask the Lord. Oh, God, we come before you in the mighty name of your Son. God, we need you. We call upon the name of the Lord, the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. God, we need you. God, we are in need of your majesty. God, we need your fire in our lives. We need longings, eternal longings for the beauty of Jesus. Father of glory, send forth a way of your spirit upon this city. Like never before, God, like you did in the days of all, oh my God. Father, we need you, God, right now in this hour, God. We are thirsty. We are in need of your greatness, of your power. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch us, God. Touch us with your beauty tonight. Father, it is in this moment, God, that we need you the most in this hour. We are in difficult days, God. And we need to hear from you, Father, in the name of Jesus. I'm asking for the revelation and the majesty of your son. Father, we need you. We don't need the words of man, God. We need your words that transform our minds, our hearts, Father. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' mighty name, oh, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we need you. We need you, Holy Ghost. Impossible to do ministry without you. It will be dead works, Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, take us deeper, yes, hallelujah, come on, we need those eyes, oh, Jesus, yes, oh, God, intercept us, God. Right now, God, by your mercy, thank you for giving us access to that throne. I want to read to you, to begin my message, I want to read something that it touched my heart. The it's a sermon, it's called Seeking the Face of God. A mother once approached Napoleon Bonaparte, seeking forgiveness for her son. He replied that the young man had committed a certain crime twice, and justice demanded death. But I don't ask for justice, the mother replied. I plead for mercy. 
But your son does not deserve mercy. Napoleon replied. Sir, the woman cried. It will not be mercy if he deserve it. And mercy is all I ask for. Well, then he said, I will have mercy. And he spared the woman's son. Perhaps tonight, this is going to be the cry of our hearts. The cry for mercy is the cry for begging God to come and open our minds with the beauty and the revelation of Jesus Christ. Like that woman, how much you and I need the cry inside of our bones for the majesty of Jesus. Oh, that Jesus will open my eyes like the blind man. We are the blind man. We are like this woman asking God for mercy. Sometimes we think that this gospel is just for others, those outside of the gospel. Let me tell you, friends, this gospel is for you and I. This gospel is you and I coming tonight, today, in mercy, begging God to open your eyes so you and I get to partner with him in this broken, evil age. This is the cry of the gospel. This is the cry of those who are following the Lamb, the friends of the bridegroom God. How many friends of the bridegroom are here? Are you a friend of the bridegroom? Beloved, seeking the face of God. In other words, it's to seek his presence. It's that word that comes from the Old Testament. That I will seek the face of God. Seeking the face of God is what we need in this hour. Especially in the church. Ministry and duties and all these things have taken the place of seeking the face of God. We have replaced the seeking of the face of God for good sons once in a while. For good men that tell us something to do. I'm here to tell you, friends, that when we come to the burning bush encounter, which is something that we do daily, we present ourselves before the Lord daily. And you and I, we have to take our sandals like Moses did. When you come to this presence of the Lord, you come in humility. You come Him. You come towards Him in humility. This is the gospel story that I'm trying to proclaim today by the mercies of the Lord. Revelations 1, 17. We need the spirit of revelation, beloved. To see us in the place of prayer, we need the spirit of revelation. Like no other day, no other time, we need his majesty. When I saw him, I felt like his feet like a dead man. But he placed his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. This is what happens when you and I say to this man, is your heart excited when you approach the marvelous light and you get a hold of his heart and his beauty? This is what happens to you and I. We fell at his feet in adoration, in humility. This is the cry of those forerunners. Are you a forerunner? Are you the one proclaiming the coming of the Lord? This is what we need in this hour. God in his mercy, that he will count us in this hour with this cry, with this revelation, like John the beloved. And when I saw him, I felt like a dead man, the majesty of our God. We have replaced this majesty with so many other things in the church. Sadly, the opinions of men, the self-centeredness of our broken evil age. It's all about me. 
How about if you turn the tables? Beloved, I'm here to tell you that there is a bigger picture than you and I in this gospel story. You and I, we are going to see him one day face to face. The majesty of our God, the age to come, the resurrection of the dead. It is much more than just a miracle and a power here and there and declaring some words here and there. The revelation of this man will hunt you down all the days of your life. Revelation 19, 12. His eyes. This is one of the most things that I love about the Lord. And Roger knows that. You see, I have no voice. It's just, it's incredible to speak about him. It's like, his eyes are like blazing fire. And on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He's dressed in a robe dipped in blood. This is something that's going to take part when he comes and he deals with the, the enemies. And his name is the word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on a white horse, on, on white horses, excuse me, and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which he strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron of scepter as he treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh he has this name written, King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Ah, oh, this is power, the name that you and I in the fellowship of the Godhead that you and I have in this broken evil age that my brothers are going to another city and they're going to stand in the night proclaiming the name that is above every other name. Do you understand when you come to the place of prayer when there is no glamorous people around you, where there's no cool music, where there's no emotion, you are talking to the Lord of hosts. Oh, what happened? Oh, there's not a lot of people there. I'm not going there. What are you talking about? What are you saying? You're talking to the Lord. You are interceding and you're taking the very place that he has for us in heaven as our forerunner, the man of sorrows. That we come and we have these places open. I remember years ago that they used to say, oh, if we only can find places of prayer. Now you have too many places of prayer around the globe. But you know what happens? It's sad. The places of prayer are empty. They only go when the good speaker of the good band of musicians are there. They don't understand the revelation of the Lord of hosts. And this is why you and I, we come and we beg God for his mercy. Oh God, that we can have our eyes open. That the body of Christ can have their eyes open so they can get to seek the face of God. This is what we do when we come to the prayer room. This is for all of us. This is not just for a minister. This is for you, my sister. This is for you, the young one. You that are 12, 10, 9. Have you written history? This week we were talking about Roger was mentioning this guy, young guy, Evan Roberts. About the revivals that God in his mercy had did with this boy. Do you understand that if you have a gift, that gift is not yours. Your youth is a gift from above that you get to see and get to play an instrument for the Lord 
of lords. Do you understand that? If you understand the way you walk, the way you see the gospel has to change. And let's learn from the master. I'm sorry, I'm screaming too much. I cannot speak. The master Jesus exemplified the secret place in his own life, leaving the massive crowds and even his closest. Matthew 14. After he had dismissed them, he went out on a mountainside, not to take pictures, by himself to pray. The God of all creation took the form of a man. And he showed us the way of the kingdom works is this. I belong to the Father and nothing that I do is apart from him. I am him and I, we are one. And like that, I am close to this man, to my Father. After he dismissed them. He went out to a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. Luke 5, 16. And he withdrew. He withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. How much? Us. I don't know if you understand that you and I, this body is not so great. This body has some problems, right? Can I hear a man? You can talk to me. It's okay. I lie when you guys respond. I don't know who was praying. You were praying, my sister. Glory be to God. I like that. When I said let's pray together, it means all pray together. This body is a body of death. Do you know that? This body is not so great that one day you're in a mountain with the Lord. Next day, zero. You don't feel anything. Where are you, God? Right? How, mom, how much more you and I as broken people, sinful people, we need to come after him and ask, knock on those doors. Knock on those doors again and again and again and again. Next day, the rest of your days, you and I, we need to seek the face of God. How many times you eat? Right? How many times your body's asking, give me, feed me. How many times you feed that inner man with eternal pleasures? How many times you say, God, until you don't speak to me, I'm not moving. Matthew 7, 7, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, ask, and you will find not just money. All right? You will find him. Him. Sometimes we take that this gospel is just about me asking God for myself to consume in my own agendas, in my own desires. It's just asking God. Asking, give me this. Give me that. Honoring God here. Honoring God there. Do you understand that? You are talking to the God who shook the Mount Sinai in that day. And people were afraid of this God. Do you understand that when you come to him, you must come to him in humility. You're talking to your creator. Whatever you say that comes from your, from your mouth, that breath that you have is not yours. I mean, it's yours, but... It belongs to him. You breathe. It's because of his mercy. So when you understand that you are alive because of him, everything has to change. Your prayer life, your seeking, the secret place of your life has to change. It takes humility to seek the face of God, beloved. Look to verse 13. And 14, and suddenly there was with the angel that appeared to the shepherds in the fields a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God 
in the highest, and on the earth, peace among those with whom he is placed. Let me ask you, friends, do you know why the shepherds got this revelation of Jesus Christ coming? They were in the fields, the nobodies. The shepherds got the revelation of the brightness, the star, the appearing of the Son of Man in the night. The shepherds, the lowly people, the nobodies. They're rejected by society. That's what I said. It takes humility to seek the face of God like those shepherds. Those who seek the face of God are called the generation of Jacob. And I spoke um, about this um, last week, I guess. I remember, right? It was last week. I forgot. Genesis 32. <laughs> So Jacob was left alone. You guys remember the story, right? Are you guys getting the point? Yeah? Good. And a man wrestled with him till the daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel. Because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my lie was spared. In the place of prayer, in this place of prayer, what happens, beloved? He changes us. He changes our name. What do you mean our name? Our brokenness. When you come with that dead body of ours, we come to the place of prayer with that lie of the enemy constantly saying, what is the point? You're supposed to be making a lot of money. You're supposed to do this, do the other thing. In the place of prayer, when you are a real seeker of his presence, of his face, he changed your brokenness. He changed who you are. He gives you the strength that you need. In the place of prayer, Jacob, he was called the heel holder, or in other words, the supplanter. In the place of prayer, God gives us his beauty. In the place of prayer, our identity, it gets color by the majesty and the revelation of Christ. The place, Peniel, it's literally the face of God. Do you understand that, my friends? That when we are coming to that place, that face-to-face -face encounter with the living God, this is what we are doing in this hour. If you are doing it with all of your heart, if you are doing it in your house, praise the Lord. If you are doing it in the house of prayer, praise the Lord. I'm here to tell you that those things have to be the priority in our lives. It sounds so simple. It sounds so like, yeah, I do that. I seek the face of God. But do you really encounter the majesty of the Lord of hosts? Do you really have a deep understanding of his forgiveness, of his plans? Do you really understand what he's about to do? Do you understand what's happening right now on the earth? Do you have that revelation, my friends? Psalm 24, 6. 
Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Seeking his face demands all life of devotion. Psalms 27, 4. We love to quote this verse. This psalm, one thing I ask from the Lord. This only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. What is your one thing, beloved? One of the greatest things that you and I get to can have is the honesty. We have to be honest with God. God is not like us. In this hour, we have to be honest with ourselves. What is the one thing of your life, brothers and sisters? Is really the Lord of hosts. Is he the one that you gaze upon when there's nobody around you? Do you like to be by yourself? Seeking the face of God. Is he the one that you're seeking? Even when nothing else is working around you. When everything else is shot. Is he the fascination in your mind? Before family, Jesus Christ put it this way. If any man wants to follow me, what? He must take up his cross and follow him daily. And then he goes on, he says, if you love more your mother, your father, or your children, you're not my disciple. In other words, it is this love that is so higher than that love that you have towards your children. How much you love your children. Oh, my children with me by the grace of the Lord. I love my children. I love my wife. Yes. But they know that God has to be my priority. Just because I'm preaching to you doesn't mean that this message is not for me. Yes, it's so much for me than it is for you. My brothers and sisters, in this broken age, we have so much comfort, so much idols. And if you think, read 1 Corinthians, I think it's 12, when he's speaking about Israel, about the idols. Why don't we seek the face of God like we show? It's because of our idols. What do you mean, Gustavo, idols? Yes, our time, our schedules, our family members. My family is my first ministry. That is a lie. Your family is not your first ministry. Christ is your first ministry. And whatever comes from that real relationship that you and I get to have with the master, it flows to them. Then you can give them love. Then you ask them for forgiveness when you broke their little hearts. Then you have the wisdom to raise them up. Then you can tell them and speak into their future because you have heard the voice of the bridegroom God. It is your job and my job to raise the next generation because they're not ours. They are his. And if you, we keep reading about the history, it says that Israel, they forgot to declare to their children the covenants of God. And what happens, my friends? What happens with that generation? What happened? They didn't know the God of Jacob. They didn't know 
the God of Israel, the one who set them free from the place of slavery. They didn't know that God. It was their parents' fault. They got too comfortable. They got too busy with their lives, with their business. Do you understand, that, friends, that the revelation of this man Christ is going to give us urgency? It's going to give us the right mindset to live in this age that is not ours. That, yes, it will be restored, but not now. Where is our treasure? This reality of seeking the face of God, it has to do with our treasure. Whatever your treasure is, that's where you're going to put your longings into. Luke 10, 38, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha. Oh, we love this story. We love this story. Oh, I love this story. But many times when I read it, I had to repent constantly. God, have mercy. A woman named Martha opened her home to him. Verse 39, she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted with all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, the Lord in his mercy, answer, you are worried and upset about many things. But few things are needed. Or indeed, only one. Only one. Say with me, friends. Only one, children, say only one thing. Not the social media, not your careers, not your youth. The one thing that you need is to get a hold of him, to get a hold of the majesty of the man, Christ Jesus. Get a hold of him. Who sustains you forever. John 6, 68. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Oh, to the government. No. Only you have the words of eternal life. Who has the words of eternal life? Do you really believe that he has the words of eternal life? To what time I have, Roger? <laughs> Do you understand? That's so great, man, that God is telling Peter. Where, like, you know, Peter, sorry, the other way around. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Psalm 60, 11. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. In your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. We need the spirit of revelation to understand that verse. Because I don't understand that. In your right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. There's fullness of joy. I believe in some kind of fullness, but I'm waiting for the fullness. In that hour, in that age to come. Because right now, I'm not so happy sometimes. <laughs> right? Amen. That's why we come to the Lord. <laughs> and say, God, I need some joy right now. It's not, I don't feel good today. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Psalm 105.4, look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Jesus is asking Peter, do you love me? And this, I believe, is the question of the hour. I believe God is 
saying to us, do you really love me? It's not the work of the evangelist afterwards. He first asked him, meditate upon that right now. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Peter, do you love me again? Yes, Lord, I love you. So make sure you love me. And then he goes back and he says, okay, feed my lambs, right? Feed my lambs. Go ahead, do the work. But that, made, that, that first part is what he, he fascinates me because that's the question of the hour. Do you really love me? The spirit of this age says, what are you doing? Including the disciples. The one thing, Paul, is not just a theory or a good concept or for a conference. Sometimes we want to be close to Jesus only when it's cool. But what happens when Monday comes, you are the only one longing for Jesus. Oh, we are so distracted, beloved. When we seek the face of God, our sins and idols are exposed. Isaiah 6, in the year the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne. And in the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings and with two wings that covered their faces, with two that covered their feet, and with two that were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the door stops and the trash hall shook and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cry. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. This is what happens when we get to see the beauty of our Lord. When we see his majesty, we see the depth of our sin. Like King Uzziah, I live amongst the people who are of unclean lips. Luke 7, 47, therefore I tell you, because her many sins have been forgiven, she has loved much, but he who has been forgiven little, loves little. This is one of the reasons why you and I love Christ a little bit, little. Sure, there is no enough to sustain us. There's not enough room, capacity in our hearts for the beauty of this man because we, don't, we haven't understood the greatness of our sin. And when you read... Isaiah 6, you understand why, as we just read. This quote about prayer, how often should I pray? As often as the language of prayer is on my heart. As often as I see my need of help. As often as I, I am sensible. 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 Sometimes this English plays with me. Of any spiritual declension. Or feel the aggression of a worldly spirit. How many times do we have to go back to the secret place? Into the seeking of the face of the Lord. Romans 7, 24. Oh, what a wretched man that I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death. Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. The God of comfort, the God of self, the God of money, reputation, busyness. And sometimes we get in the way of seeking the face of God. Hebrews eleven twenty four, By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. 
This is the gospel story that you and I need to understand. Just like Moses, we need to deny ourselves. He refused to be called in this manner. The pleasures of Egypt. Matthew 25. I believe that Matthew 25 as the wise virgins is the seeking of that great oil. It's the oil of intimacy that is going to take us and keep us alive during the night. Which is what is coming upon the earth. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lambs but did not take all, any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lambs. The bridegroom was a long time in coming. And they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight cry rang out, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lambs. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lambs are going out. In most of the important hours right now, God in his mercy is asking us, like the wise virgins, are you taking the time to take oil for your lambs. This is very important. That oil is our very lives. Our lambs need our oil. And that oil is only produced when you and I get to be in that place of intercession, of intimacy, of the fellowship with the Godhead. The beauty of Christ, that word, that revelation that comes into our mind. Oh, beloved, we need that oil. We need the oil of intimacy. Our lambs cannot run out in the most of the important hour of history. I believe that this oil is super important, super clever. Super deep. We have to have the oil in our lamps, in our families, in our places of prayer. When we seek the face of God, thy oil has to be there. My soul is overwhelmed. Mark 14 34. One of the most important moments of Jesus and his disciples, he asked them, can you pray with me? In this hour, can you pray with me? Can you pray with me? Can you stand with the Son of Man in this hour? Can you stand with the Son of Man in this hour? Rejecting the God of this age, can you stand with the Son of Man in his hour? Can you reject and be like Moses? He refused to be called from Egypt. Can we stand with the Son of Man in his hour, beloved? Are we going to be like Peter? When Christ asks us, do you really love me? What is the answer that we are going to give the bridegroom God in this hour? Do you really love me? Are you willing to go deeper in the seeking of the face of God? Are you willing to take others by the hand with the power of the gospel? Into the seeking of the face of God. Beloved, I want us to call the Lord tonight. If the worship team, if 
you want to come and let's respond to the Lord. Let's ask the Lord, God, I need your oil. I need you right now. Like John the Beloved, I need the vision of the man. I want to see you, God. I want to see you face to face like Jacob. I want to be the young man who's refusing the spirit of his age. Who's saying, God, do something. I'm only a boy. He did it with David. He can do it with you. He did it with Josiah. He can do it with you. But first, you need to understand the revelation of Jesus Christ. You need to beg for your eyes to be open like the blind man. Son of David, have mercy on me. You need to cry out like that woman, if I can only touch a piece of his garment, I know I will be healed. Do you have this desire to reach for the more of God, of Christ? Beloved, let's respond to the Lord. I want us to come to the front if you want. If there's something that the Holy Spirit has highlighted to your heart. I feel like I need to stop right here. I have other parts on the message, but I feel this is a moment for us to respond to Him. I'm with you 100%. I need to seek the face of God like no other day. We need His nearness. We need His fire in our lives. We need His revelation. If you are the one who is saying, God, I am the one. I am the one in need. I am the one who is thirsty, who is hungry, who is desperate, God. I am the one. I want to seek your face. I want the spirit of revelation in my life. If you're the one, come to the front. I want to ask the staff if someone comes, we can pray together. Let's sing. If you want to change positions, if you want to stand up and let's, let's sing to the Lord, respond to Him.